Hey, what's up everyone? I welcome you once again to one of my tutorials. In this session, I will be talking about how you can stream the data from Binance using Python. So if you landed in this video, you probably have an idea of what this chart here means. This is a chart representing candlestick data of the current market situation, specifically BTC USDT. BTC stands for Bitcoin and USDT stands for the currency to which the Bitcoin is compared to. This together, is a symbol. So now I have selected 15 minutes, but if I select one month now, then I will see how Bitcoin was developing against USDT, which means the stable dollar in the months. So this chart represents every month stored on Binance. Similar thing happens when I change it to a week or to a day or to four hours, one hour or 15 minutes. You can even stream every minute of data. If you know how to stream the data yourself, this can become quite a powerful knowledge. Maybe you will find out how the charts work and based on this you will be able to trade. I will explain in the next videos how you can recognize specific patterns on Binance using Python or also other programming languages. But for now let's concentrate on Python itself. How you can stream this candlestick data live. But before I get to that, there is one more thing that I would like to say about candlesticks. I would like to explain what a candlestick actually is. So candlestick represents how the value of the market was moving at the specific moment in time. There are only two movements that exist on the market and that's an increasing means bullish candlestick and a decreasing means bearish candlestick. Both of them have their high low and open and close but the open and close is reversed this is because when the value of the market grows it starts at the bottom here it opens and at the top it closes but it doesn't have to close at the complete top and doesn't have to open at the complete bottom the high and low they represent the highest and lowest price that candlestick achieved during the interval that you selected opening price is the price with which it was beginning the interval and the closing price is the one with which it was finishing the interval the same goes for bearish candlesticks they are opening at the top and they are closing at the bottom but also not at the complete bottom, there is just the maximum low and the high is the highest value that the candlestick achieved while the market was falling in price. This would be in short how candlesticks work. And now let's return back to Binance and live stream the data that we can see here. And we can do all this using Python. We are going to stream Binance data through WebSockets. The most important thing here is to know the address where we want to stream from and the information about it I found on github.com under this address. And now we are going to stream this K line or candlestick data. We are going to stream them in one of these intervals and the data is going to look like this. Let's go on and let's save this for later use. Let's just remark them and let's go build a WebSocket function which will stream the data for us. But first we need an address that our WebSocket will connect to. I think the address is going to be this one. And here the name. So this is the base address for the WebSocket on Binance. And this is the additional part specifying what exactly we are going to stream from Binance. So for us, this is going to be the stream name. We are going to use exactly this syntax. So what we need is a symbol and a specific interval. We already have examples here. So let's import WebSocket which we installed previously and now let's define a function which will be called let's say stream k line and we need to specify a symbol which we are going to stream and an interval let's specify the address from which we are going to stream it let's declare socket variable and here let's now copy this entire address here we just need to change this to, to curly brackets. This is all. And also here. And also here. Now we need to declare WebSocket itself. Let's do it this way. WebSocket app. 
and what we need to add now is some message functionality this one and same named method having two attributes ws and message we print out the message once it appears and we will reference the on message event to our method that we just declared now we would need on error we again will declare method called on error where we will specify the websocket itself and the error which arrived we will print out that error in the case it arrives and in the case this method will get active and the last thing that we need is on close so what happens when the string closes this will be defined in a method also called on close and it will contain the so-called close message and here in this case we will print out the close message all right now we will reference the on close event with our method and we will tell our websocket to run forever and that's it that's i think pretty much all that is necessary to stream data from binance except for one last thing and this is run the streaming itself we need to call the stream k line method in order to stream the data so let's do it as a symbol i will use in my case btc usdt to stream exactly this data here one minute interval i will write it here and to interval exactly this here one minute i have the same selection here every of these candlesticks here will last precisely one minute i will come back and here i will write one minute 1m again if you would like to change the interval for something else you will find all the intervals listed here on this page now let's go stream some data and this i will simply do by running it and it doesn't work the from socket import socket was added by Visual Studio Code automatically while I'm declaring the socket variable in the code myself. That's why I have to remove the import and now it works. And here we receive the first data. That's how it looks like. And this will now be running for exactly 24 hours because that's what Binance is telling us here. A single connection to stream Binance is only valid for 24 hours. So after 24 hours, we are going to be disconnected. But anyway, if you can stream data like this, you can achieve quite a lot of stuff with that. In case you would like to download the code of Python Binance Streamer that I just wrote, you will find it on my GitHub under tech divisions and python binance streamer the address you will find included under the video and that's it please like comment and if this is the first time you are watching one of my videos don't forget to subscribe see you soon